Hello everyone, we're live in the Dolce Vita Cafe. <laughs> Just wanna give people a minute in case they wanna pop on live while I organize my notes. And bring myself up on my computer in case I see anyone writing to me in the chat. <laughs> I have a question. When People online straighten their hair with curling, with the, uh, curl their hair with straighteners. Why does it look so cute? When I do it, it looks like I fried my hair. <laughs> I tried, people. I tried. Okay, so let's get my notes up here. I'm going to take a sip of water, and then we'll get started with our little chat. How's the sound? Not there yet? Doing all our little tech checks first. Let me adjust the camera here. How I see two people on live. One's probably me. <laughs> okay. Sound okay? Okay, let's get started. So I want to talk about Mediterranean diet living on a budget because I was at the supermarket yesterday or the day before and eggs were seven ninety nine. $7.99, people, that's $8 for a dozen eggs. That's crazy. Food is so expensive right now. But the Mediterranean diet is a really good way to save money on your food budget. So I want to go through some tips of how to save money with the Mediterranean diet. And the first one I think is very obvious. I'm always talking about eat as many vegetables as possible. To fill half your plate with vegetables at every meal, try to get five to 10 vegetables a day. Vegetables are so much less expensive than meat when you go to the supermarket. The other day I went and I was just looking for vegetables because I wanted to make like a vegetable casserole type of thing. So I bought a bunch of vegetables at the supermarket and I really didn't pick up much else. Maybe, you know, I might've had a loaf of bread or something like that. And the bill was under $20. So if you really are, are feeling the pain when you go to the supermarket, Try to stick to vegetables and try to eat as many of them as you can. Um, the other staples of the Mediterranean diet will also save you money because I, I was reading a quote from Old Ways and they said, the Mediterranean diet is really based on peasant food from back in the day. And uh, <clears throat> so it's, it's not that it's any kind of fancy diet. Now, we talk a lot about olive oil and drinking red wine and eating a lot of fish and those things can get expensive. Um, but the basics of the Mediterranean diet are whole grains, beans, legumes, nuts and seeds, vegetables. They're all the things that you can buy pretty inexpensively at the supermarket. I usually pick up uh, beans in a can because they're so convenient. So I'll pick up cannellini beans, which are just white kidney beans, um, <clears throat> black beans and chickpeas and butter beans. Uh, and really in a can like that, they're pretty inexpensive, but it's even less expensive if you want to buy them in the bags where they're dried and you have to cook them yourself. Um, so if you really do want to save money on something like that, uh, beans and legumes and things are a good place to start. Whole grains like, like um, bags of rice and oatmeal and farro and you want to try to do all the different kinds of things like frika and millet and stuff like that, they're also, you can buy a bag of them and they can go a long way. You can add them um, into, um, you can use them as breakfast cereals, you know, as an alternative to expensive eggs or something like polenta. I, the other day, uh, if you're following along on my Instagram or on my, in my Facebook group, I made a polenta bowl for sort of brunch. It was sort of like in between breakfast and lunchtime. And I bought the instant polenta that cooks in three minutes and I made a bunch of vegetables around it. And it was a really nice plate. And that's a good alternative for breakfast if you're looking for something um, that isn't as expensive. Um, like buying bacon and eggs, <coughs> excuse me, bacon and eggs is going to be really expensive. Maestro says, eggs are too high. Any breakfast alternatives? Yes. You can eat anything for breakfast. You can eat leftovers that you find in your fridge for breakfast. Like we, So we're sort of in this mindset of being trapped into breakfast has to be bacon, eggs, toast, juice, you know, um, or some kind of meat like breakfast sausage or something. Um, breakfast can be anything. And like I said, polenta is a really nice, warm, comforting, filling uh, alternative to the even things like oatmeal. So you can have oatmeal, you can make instant oats and um, I mean, uh, oats in a jar that you set up the night before if you want to save time. Um, uh, any of the grains can make a really good breakfast cereal. So try something like that or even um, making a breakfast sandwich with maybe an English muffin or some bread and then put vegetables on it or maybe um, hummus or something like that. It doesn't have to be <clears throat> um, the traditional breakfast that we always think of. And you can also 
Things like polenta and oatmeal, uh, you can make them sweet or savory. You know, some people like to eat their oatmeal sweet with brown sugar or cinnamon or honey or maple syrup or something on it, but you can also make that savory as well and put vegetables in it and maybe sprinkle a little cheese and you have a nice little inexpensive breakfast that's an alternative to eggs. So thank you for your question, Maestro, and thank you for joining me live. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let me take a sip of water because I have my morning voice still. <clears throat> Another way to save money is to eat at home. Uh, you know, it's fun to go out to eat. It's fun to go get your coffee at a cafe. It's fun to go to a diner. But even diners are really expensive right now because they're feeling the, the high cost of the food too and they have to pass it on to their customers. So when you make your dinner at home, not only can you control your portion sizes better, uh, but you're also going to know all the ingredients that are in your food because when you go out, you don't really know what everything is in your food. They're going to try to put, um, you know, heavy creams and things and heavy mayonnaise and stuff like that in your things to make it more luscious when you eat it. Um, and the portion sizes are outrageous when you go out to eat. Um, so eat at home. You can save money by cooking instead of spending the money on the service. And you can also control what you're eating much better. Now, another way uh, to save money on the Mediterranean diet is to try to eat canned fish. Um, sometimes when you go to the fish uh, counter now. Fish can be really expensive. I mean, sometimes it's inexpensive. Usually salmon is one of the less expensive ones, or I'd like to buy flounder, and that's kind of fairly inexpensive too. Um, but if you're feeling the pain at the fish counter as well, and you want to get those omega-3s, you can use canned tuna. Uh, the other day I made um, a Mediterranean plate for lunch where I put a couple of little things around my plate, and one of the things that I did was I opened a can of mackerel, a little tin of mackerel, and I split it between our two plates that I was making up for us for lunch. And I didn't do anything to it. Just fresh out of the can, it was just mackerel and olive oil. Amy says, hi. Hi, Amy, thank you for joining me live. <clears throat> um, so try canned fish. And if you don't, uh, like I'm a huge tuna salad lover. I'm always making tuna salad. Um, but a lot of people think that tuna might be a little too strong in flavor. So try mackerel. It's really mild. It's really a nice, um, it's really a nice fish and it has, it is kind of the highest fish in omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, and it's not really easy to buy fresh mackerel all the time in the supermarket. It's, it's hard to find sometimes. So the only way that I get it sometimes is in a tin. Uh, you can also find salmon in a tin sometimes, or you can buy anchovies and uh, use them. Sometimes if I'm sauteing something, I'll add an anchovy to the olive oil while I'm warming it up and it just kind of melts away and it adds a nice flavor to things. So uh, don't be afraid of tinned fish. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another uh, way to save money is to buy whole heads of lettuce when you want to make salad. Instead of buying the pre-chopped uh, you know, bags of salad or the salad kits that you find, you can get a lot more. Uh, any ideas on how to get rid of muzzy head? I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure what that means. Can you explain? Um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, Oh, whole heads of lettuce. Yeah, like the other day I was at the at the supermarket and even iceberg lettuce, which I like, and a lot of people don't like iceberg, um, but it does have nutritional value. There's a rumor going around that iceberg has no nutritional value. Um, even iceberg was really expensive. Um, so I bought a head of red leaf lettuce, I bought a head of iceberg, I bought a head of radicchio, and uh, I chopped them all up separately. I put them in my little salad spinner, you know, and it, it goes a lot further instead of, if you buy a bag of salad, you might get two salads out of that, you know, or if you're making it for a whole family, you might use the whole bag. Uh, but if you buy the, the whole, uh, it's like a headache, doesn't hurt as much. It's like when you wake up and you feel a bit dizzy and forgetful. Um, sometimes I get like a fuzzy head like that if I've had wine. Um, I'm just looking up the definition here. Uh, sometimes if you're if you're having um, uh, if you're on medications or things like that, that can cause that that kind of feeling. Um, but usually, if I cut out wine, I don't know if you're a wine drinker. Um, but uh, usually that does it for me. Like after a few days, uh, I, I feel a lot more clear headed. So um, you might want to ask your doctor about that if it's really a problem, if you're waking up and you're having extreme dizziness. Um, but uh, I would definitely ask my doctor. But if you do drink a lot of wine, I think sometimes that's the culprit. Um, and I find that myself, if I, if I try to lay off wine for a while, I feel much clearer headed, especially when I wake up in the morning <clears throat> and drink a lot of water. So um, getting back to saving money on uh, your food, I'm always telling, encouraging people to eat dark leafy greens. And uh, 
But you know, at my super, my local supermarket, where they had a lot of variety of dark leafy greens, they've been doing a lot of construction lately, and uh, so they haven't really had them in stock in that section. Um, but even something like spinach, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Amy. I hope that helps. Um, a lot of um, uh, and you can eat spinach as a leafy green alternative if you can't find things like beet greens and turnip tops and mustard greens. Um, so I'm really missing out on some of those uh, vegetables that they used to have all the time. And hopefully when they're done their construction project, they'll get them back. Um, but I wanted to also encourage you to try frozen vegetables if you can't find um, what you're looking for. Like I haven't, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I haven't been able to find the greens that I want. Um, so you can buy a bag of frozen spinach. And you know how when you buy a big head of spinach, or you buy it fresh in, in like a salad department or something. When you cook it, it shrinks down to nothing. If you buy a bag of frozen spinach, it's already sort of pre-shrunk. Um, so it's kind of an economical way to get your greens. Um, another way is if you like to eat chicken. Chicken is also expensive right now. Um, but it's a little bit cheaper if you buy a whole chicken and then you cut it into parts yourself. It's really not that hard. You can find videos online about how to do it. Um, You'll probably save, um, you could save upwards to like 15, 50 cents a pound when you buy a whole chicken instead of buying it pre-cut. Uh, so that's just another tip. And also, I'm always encouraging people to grow herbs at home. Uh, I have a whole lineup in my kitchen on a little wall of different herbs that I have. And I have basil growing and rosemary and um, I have thyme. I uh, have lemon balm, I have sage. Uh, you can grow them really expensively at home. And even if you don't have a lot of space, um, just think of them as like a, a potted plant that you have in your house. You don't always have to have a backyard. And my last tip for saving money on the Mediterranean diet is to make sure you go through your leftovers. Because a lot of times I'll make too much food and I put it away in the refrigerator and then you know, I move on, I forget about it, and two weeks later I'm like, what is this? What am I throwing out? I don't even remember what this is. Um, so try to make a point of, of eating your leftovers. Like, actually make yourself a food calendar. And if you make something on Monday, you know, have the leftovers on Wednesday. Uh, there's a woman that I know that always makes up a little menu for her family, and then she says, um, menu reprise <laughs> on certain days, which is a nice way of saying we're having leftovers tonight. <clears throat> so um, just remember, go through your leftovers. Because sometimes I'll deliberately make too much of something just so it saves me time later in the week that I know I'm going to heat it up again. Like, um, for example, whenever I make pasta, Thursday is pasta night at my house. We always had Thursdays as pasta night when I was growing up, and I've just kept kept at that um, in my own life and I was an adult. So what I'll do is, even though I know we're not going to eat the entire box of spaghetti that I cook, I'll cook the whole thing, we'll take the portions that we're having for dinner, and then I make a pasta salad out of whatever's left over. Or I'll just, if I have a lot of sauce left over, I'll keep it together and then maybe we'll just reheat the, the pasta with the tomato sauce again later in the week. So I hope this helps for budgeting because <clears throat> I know I'm feeling the pain when I go to the supermarket and when I saw that eggs were $7.99, I was just shocked. And I know that they, they're saying there's a bird flu going around or something like that. I don't know. It makes me want to buy my own chickens and keep them in the backyard. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so does anyone have any questions about budgeting or ways to save money? As if not, uh, my next topic, have you seen Pinocchio yet? I haven't. I know you recommended it last week. Um, I'm actually going to talk about later... Um, I have one more topic and I'm going to get to all the things that I've been watching lately, but Pinocchio is on my list, I promise. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of TV shows instead of movies. Um, but my next topic is to talk about inflammation. I was reading a Harvard study about inflammation and it was a list of foods that can be, uh, that can cause inflammation and then a list of anti-inflammatory foods. Now, inflammation can cause a lot of problems in our body. Um, it can, it can lead to diseases like cancer and heart disease and arthritis and even depression. I mean, there's so many things that can be linked to inflammation in the body. My scarf is getting all out of balance here. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> I got this for Christmas. Isn't it pretty? Um, so I'm going to go through a list of foods that are um, that cause inflammation first. So one of them is refined carbs like white bread and pastries. Um, you know, not all carbs, but refined carbs that are really... Uh, refined down to where there's not much nutritional value left to them and um, also fried foods you know things like french fries are inflammatory soda sweet tea and sweetened beverages can cause inflammation 
um, refined, su refined sugars and also artificial sweeteners. So all the artificial sweeteners aren't any better than eating refined sugar. Um, red meat and processed meats, things like hot dogs and sausages, but also just red meat like burgers and steaks and things like that. If you eat too much of it, you can eat a little bit of it. And margarine, shortening, and lard was on their list as well. Um, so they don't have butter on the list, but those butter substitutes and things that we, like old-fashioned things like lard or people used to cook with, I don't think a lot of people use it anymore. Um, but there's just some things to be aware of. And now I'm going to give you a list of some anti-inflammatory foods. So if you are having any problems with inflammation, uh, one of the good things is tomatoes, to eat tomatoes. Um, I was actually reading a study too about um, rethinking breakfast and they were trying to think outside the barnyard, which they call it, to where our breakfast is always... You know, it's some kind of meat, it's some kind of eggs, it's all things, you know, butter. It's all things that come from the animal world that you would think of in the barnyard. And one of the good th ways to counteract that is to add tomatoes to your meal. So if you do have eggs or butter or something like that, use tomatoes um, as a sort of a counterbalance to that. Another thing is olive oil. Uh, on the Mediterranean diet, you really should be using olive oil instead of all the other oils that are out there. You can re replace all the olive, uh, all the oils in your life with olive oil. I know a lot of people like to use canola oil, but it's really not as healthy as olive oil. Um, another one is green leafy vegetables. Another one are things like are nuts like almonds and walnuts, all the different kinds of nuts, as long as you're not allergic. And fatty fishes like salmon, mackerel, tuna, sardines. Uh, and they're also the kind of things that you can find in... Uh, in the tins. Amy says she just has cereal for breakfast. Um, cereal can be good too, depends on what kind of cereal you're eating, um, but a lot of cereal is made with refined carbs and has a lot of sugars in it, so make sure you read the ingredients on the package. And the last uh, category for anti-inflammatory foods are fruits. You know, all the berries, strawberries, blueberries, and also cherries, oranges, things like that. Uh, so if you're having any kind of problems with inflammation or even your muzzy head, as you said, um, try adding some of these anti-inflammatory foods to your diet and see if it makes you feel better. Um, and if you think of that list of things that I just went through, the tomatoes, the olive oil, the leafy greens, the nuts, the, the, the cherry, uh, honey nut Cheerios, is that what you're eating? <laughs> I really don't know about honey nut Cheerios. I think you might want to read the ingredients on that package and, and maybe try for more, a more whole grain breakfast than that. Um, but if you listen, all those, all those foods that I listed as the anti-inflammatory foods, Aren't they familiar? It's the Mediterranean diet, right? The Mediterranean diet is the solution to all of your problems. <laughs> it's the common sense way to eat. Um, so that was a study from Harvard, and I thought it was really interesting. And I'll put an actual, when I'm done here, and uh, I, uh, I'll put in the description box the link to that article if you want to read more about that. All right, so enough about food and the Mediterranean diet. I want to talk to you about what I've been watching recently. And next week, I'm going to be able to tell you that I watched Pinocchio, Amy. <laughs> uh, but what have I watched recently? I already told you that I watched The Peripheral, um, which was uh, based on a William Gibson book. And I'm reading the book. I'm almost done the book. Um, the book and the TV show are very different, but they're both very enjoyable. I enjoyed both. Um, I've, all, I've been watching a lot of kind of mind-bending TV shows and science fiction and a lot of spy stuff, like British spy stuff. Um, I'm going to take a sip of water. So I watched a show called Slow Horses that was on Apple TV+. Plus. It was about a bunch of misfit spies. <laughs> they all did something in their careers um, where they made a big mistake somewhere and they all kind of got sent to this office where they... They kind of think that they're, they can keep them out of trouble. <laughs> um, but of course, they get involved in a, in a case, and they all have to bring their skills together um, to solve some problem. And it was really enjoyable. There were two seasons of that. And there are two seasons more coming, I believe. Um, I didn't have Apple TV+. Plus. I signed up for a free um, one-week trial just so I could watch the show. Um, so if you want to, you know, without spending any money, you can sign up for the free trial and watch the show. Because then I didn't really find anything else I wanted to watch on on uh, Apple TV Plus, so I sort of canceled it, you know, and I figured when the, I'll sign up for it for real when the new seasons come out, because I really did enjoy that show. It has a lot of interesting actors in it, too. It has Chris and Scott Thomas, who I love. Um, another show that we watched recently, it was called Utopia. Now, this was a crazy show. Um, this was on, I believe it was on Amazon Prime. Um, and there are two versions of it. I watched if you want to see mind-bending checkout videos about Meow Wolf, an arch group who makes an amazing exhibit. Okay, thanks. Thank you for the recommendation. Um, the show Utopia, I, I watched an American version of it, and then when I was researching what it, 
where it came from because I thought, this is so crazy. It had to be based on a graphic novel or something, but it wasn't. Um, it was actually based on a British TV show, which was also on Amazon Prime. So I watched the American version, which had John Cusack in it. And then I watched, went back and watched, there were two seasons of the British version. And they were kind of different, but very similar, similar characters and crazy, crazy show. Very, very violent, I have to warn you. Um, uh, but just really interesting um, and kind of mind bending at the same time. Uh, so if you're looking for something really kind of weird and intellectual, uh, but but also just warn you about the violence. Uh, Utopia was an interesting show. And I just finished watching on Netflix a show called The Recruit, um, <clears throat> which it ended up being better than I thought it was going to be. When I started watching the first episode, I was like, eh, this is, you know, I don't know. Um, but I really kind of got caught up in it after a while, and I like the actors who were in it. Um, so if you want to watch The Recruit, that was interesting. And he's he's not a spy, but he works for the CIA as a lawyer, but he just keeps getting caught up in all of these uh, missions that people are going on and he keeps saying I swear I swear I'm not a spy I'm just a lawyer uh, it's kind of funny <clears throat> and then my one last show was a Brazilian show that I watched on Netflix one thing I love about Netflix is they're not afraid to buy a bunch of TV shows from foreign countries and put them on and they're just really interesting and this was a show called Omniscient and it was from Brazil uh, and it was about a, sl a, a world in slightly in the future and everybody is being observed at all times. They have these little things that fly around. They look like little bees that follow them around and they, they photograph or they film everything that the people do all day. And the idea behind it is that it cuts down on crime because everyone knows they're being observed all the time. Um, but then of course a murder happens and uh, um, you know they somehow it gets past the system. So this, there's this young girl who's trying to solve this murder. Um, uh, of, of a member of her family while trying to be trapped in this world where everybody's observing everything that she's doing. Uh, and what did Amy just say? <clears throat> if you watch Apple TV, check out Come, Come From Away and Shadoon. Okay, I will look them up. I let the, the subscription go, but I will look them up because as soon as they come out with that show again, um, Slow Horses, I want to join. Um, and I think that is the end of everything that I wanted to talk to you about today. <laughs> um, so unless any has, anyone has anything they want to be coached around or they have any questions, um, I just want to thank you for joining me today. And I hope that you check out some of those shows and you take some of my tips on how to save money on the Mediterranean diet and try eating some of those foods on the anti-inflammatory food list and see if it helps you feel better. And Amy, see if it helps with your uh, muzzy head. Um, so if nobody has anything else, I am going to sign off for the week and uh, I will see you on Friday with another recipe video. Uh, and uh, that's all I have. <laughs> have a great day, everyone.